We know Andrew doesn't need a, need a mic. Or one. No, one mic for me. Ladies and gentlemen, members and guests, many guests, good morning and welcome to another beautiful day in Port Angeles. It really is beautiful here, and we take so many things for granted. The mountains, the ocean, the good friends, the hot food on our table, even mundane things like news, like paper. You ordered off a menu. You're going to get your bill on paper. You're going to sign a Visa credit card receipt. You're going to write a check. We don't see the recorder. We might even read the story in the paper tomorrow of today's meeting. Paper has been with the human race for thousands and thousands of years. It's part of our daily life. And we are really fortunate right here to have it manufactured in our hometown employing 165 people at good family wage jobs. This is the kind of diversified industry we want. But what are the products they are making? What are the products of the future? How's that biomass generator doing? Let's sit back and learn all about our own industry here in Port Angeles as we melt welcome um, Mark Fournay, who is the Director of Sales and Marketing. Welcome, Mark. <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting me to speak at this. I really appreciate it. Um, it's actually quite interesting. I haven't, uh, I've been here for the one year in March of this year. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Canadian, so thanks for knowing about the money now. <laughs> sure well, you told me about the house you have for sale. <laughs> yes, I do have that. I do have a house for sale in Canada that I'm trying to get rid of, but it's not been an easy venture, that's for sure. Um, so I've been here a little over almost a year now. Um, uh, Nippon approached me uh, back in December of 2014, just after what you're very familiar with was PM2 shutting down. And as you know, at the mill, uh, telephone directory was probably the most popular item on the machines. It's something that uh, the mill was born on, something they've been making all their money on for years and years. But with times changing, uh, culture changing, we're all into personal devices, these things are struggling very badly. In fact, we're almost seeing none of it at the moment. So what they did was they started looking around for other things to do. Um, so what they did was they started canvassing a lot of the people in the paper industry, and we stumbled across one another. Um, I came out here and I met with uh, Chris Nagara, uh, the president, the Japanese uh, appointed president here in North America and uh, with Steve Johnson and a number of the other executives. Um, I explained to them where I had come from, what I had been doing, uh, and how I had been doing it. So my background is um, tissue first. Um, I was born into the paper industry many years ago into white tissue paper, uh, things of uh, towel, uh, facial tissue, dinner napkins, things of that nature, okay? Um, did that for a number of years and then um, decided that I wanted to make a change. Tissue was actually very exciting at that time, but there were other sectors and I've always been a, a challenge person. I don't like to do things that are too easy, I like to do things that are hard. So I decided to look at craft paper. Now craft paper had a lot of strange twists to it. The industry was very vertically integrated, uh, which made things very difficult. Um, a bit of a uh, change person. I believe change is good. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think we all have to keep our eyes and ears open to it. And we have to adapt constantly. That is the nature of all of our businesses. You're all business owners. So I'm sure you understand that probably better than anybody. Um, I decided to jump into lightweight craft paper. Uh, I've been on it for a number of years. I worked for Cascade in Canada. I worked, uh, I started Mondi in uh, North America. Mondi was a, a zero company in North America, set up their head office in Atlanta, and today they're about a $750 million business. So they're very viable, they've done very well, it's a European entity. Um, 
they uh, have been very, very successful in getting into lightweight paper, which is where I came across with the folks at Nippon. Um, also to add to that, I've also been part of Longview Fiber when it was Longview Fiber, just down the road. Now it's Capstone. Um, I was there for two years as their export director. So what I'm, in effect, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pull all my years of expertise together and use them to the advantage of Nippon paper here in Port Angeles. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll take you through um, what we or where we were with Nippon very briefly. Uh, most of you know where we were, but I'll take you down a road that you'll be probably quite surprised to learn. So I'll take you through very quickly a group overview so you can see what we look like now. Uh, for those of you that don't know what we look like, we're Japanese owned. Uh, the Japanese owners have been extremely supportive. I think we have to definitely tip our hats to them. They are listening very hard. Uh, I joined in March. We've had a visit from Mr. Monashiro, who's the chairman of the company. We've also had a visit from Mr. Nozawa, who's our chief strategic officer. Um, I have met with them. We've discussed strategy in North America. Uh, that is my forte before I drive. The folks that are here from the paper mill know somewhat of what I've been talking about. I do address all the paper groups in the mill. One of the things I like to do and that the Japanese have been very supportive of is I address the union once a quarter. I think it's very important to leave, let all the management know that I will communicate with the union people at the mill. They have vested interest in what we're doing. Our livelihoods are connected to it. Uh, I moved here from Montreal, so we better be successful, <laughs> uh, more importantly than anything else. Um, I've got two kids uh, that depend on me doing the right things, and they're in Montreal. So thank goodness for Skype and Google Video Conference. Um, so to take you through all of these different uh, parts, so Nippon Paper is now the sixth largest paper company in the world. Uh, that number moves, this is from 2012, but that number moves back and forth. We just recently sold a very large uh, position with um, Nine Dragons in uh, China. We divested from them about 15%. Most of that capital, most of that money that we're pulling out of there, some of that's going to be used for investment here. Okay. NPI structure in North America. Um, we're the only wholly owned operation. Everything else, we're partners. We have a lot of partners, both in Canada and the United States. I'm Canadian, of course. Um, one of the things I am doing, just to lend a little bit of uh, uh, background, I am moving to become a US citizen. I'm working here on a TN visa. I've just recently applied for my H-1B, and I will very quickly, call it 18 months from now, I'm told by immigration to be a US citizen. So my intention is to remain here and continue helping the mill and buy all the people we have ever after. You can see by Nippon's group, sorry if I'm blocking out at all. Um, you can see that paper is very important to us. Um, it's really number two ahead of chemical products. Chemical products has been very good in Asia, but certainly here in North America, uh, paper is the main price. Okay. So the mill you're very familiar with, the geography of it, we're right here. Um, just so you understand, uh, in the paper industry, and most of you folks know it better than I do, there were a lot more paper mills here in Port Angeles for many years. All closed, with the exception of ours. And this one will not close. I will tell you that right now. I will make sure that it won't close. We're doing everything we can to keep it viable. And now we're starting to turn some profit in some of our calculations that we're very encouraged with. And that's the reason why the Japanese have been so supportive. Okay. We had a plan and we're working it. Okay. If you all want to know about the cogen operation, about biomass. Well, biomass is very clear. Um, it is a very, very smart move by the Japanese. It is green energy. Aside from the fact that prices for energy are depressed right now, unfortunately they're hooked to oil, so if you want to know how profitable biomass can be, just watch energy prices of oil. Everything falls oil right now, unfortunately. 
that's where we're stuck. Uh, it's not something that we can control. We're not big enough in this business to exercise any control in it. Plus, we also follow market prices on the grid. Okay. The operation is doing very well. We're happy with where we're at right now. Uh, we've hit 22 meg, which is a good story for us. We've done it a number of times now, and we're going to continue to push forward there. Okay. Um, you can see PM2 went idle in November of 2014. Um, I'll say this to you, most of the folks on the paper machine ask all the, all the time, ask the question, when are we going to start PM2? I think right now our strategy uh, should be to continue with PM3 and make it as profitable as possible. That's our objective. Drive profit through PM3, make it gold, and then we'll move over to 2. One of the things we are actively doing, I'm actively doing, is looking for partners on PM2. There are a number of European companies that would like to hear more about what we're doing uh, with PM2 if we do it. And that's where we're focused right now. People who cannot reach us, which is the Europeans, and my background is with the Europeans. That's where I was trained. That's where my paper making skills come from. Um, being under Mondi for 10 years, they, uh, they whipped me pretty hard. Um, another thing which actually was on the last slide and I should touch on, we, uh, we were 150 employees when I began back in March of last year. We are now 165 employees. We just recently hired back 15 people, uh, which is, in my, in my eyes, a great story. Uh, when you start to hire people back, that's a very, very good sign. Uh, our intention is to continue forward in that manner. Uh, we've done a number of things which you'll see very shortly. And those are things that are going to drive employment in the region. You can see here, this is the uh, co-gen, a little bit of detail from the co-gen we've already talked about. The other thing that I think is very interesting that we've added at the paper mill is an OCC operation. So where do we drive our business from? Well, it's old corrugated case. By using old corrugated case, we've just done a very good thing from our cost structure. Okay, this is what's going to drive us into the next level. The more recycled material we use in our sheet, the better off we will be. And that's what we're doing right now. We're driving our sheet into the area of 60 to 70 percent recycled. We still use mechanical pulp, which you're very familiar with. Um, but one of the things we're doing, and if anybody wants to know more about it, I brought them with me. This is a refiner mechanical pulp. I brought a sheet to explain what we're doing. Uh, we're not shy about it. It's a hybrid sheet. We mix both uh, RNP with OCC. And what that does is it allows us to tell a story to the end users. So one of our strategies is to, we have Nippon Paper as the paper maker, then you get into the converting community, distribution, and the end users. So what we've done recently is we've got two salespeople on the road who work with me. And what they're doing is they're driving the business down from the top. They're going into the converting community or connecting the dots at the top level. And what I'm doing is I'm going into the bottom end. I'm going to the Starbucks, the McDonald's, the Burger Kings, everybody. All the fast food operations, large industrial companies that can buy large quantities from us, and we're driving it up from the bottom. And what's happening is they're meeting in the middle. It takes a little more time and effort to do it. But the Japanese are very committed, and they've opened up their, their purse strings, if you will, to allow that to happen. And it's showing success, which you'll see very shortly. So if anybody wants more information about what we're doing from a raw material standpoint, it's right here. You can see there that we have uh, the OCC pulper. Um, again, uh, we store everything at site. We're pulling a lot of information in from the SOP side of it. That's going to help us with our uh, leach grade. Uh, and again, bleach grade is more pulling, it's all recycled, SOP. Okay. Um, we've also made an investment on crate products and toweling, which you'll see today. Toweling is quite interesting. This is something that's brand new. Um, we're all familiar with these in washrooms. Okay? They all come in every dispensary in a washroom. I'm sure there's one even here. We also have multifold as well. We signed an agreement with a company in Woodland, Washington. Again, what we're doing is we're playing to our local business. 
We have an agreement with a company in Woodland, Washington. It's exclusive, where we'll sell them about 9,000 tons a year, actually. Probably a little less than that right now, but we're walking into it. Let's put it that way. So big companies like Starbucks, local company, they're supporting us. We're going to Safeco Field. They're interested in what we're doing. We make this product in natural, white, and brown. This is a natural product that I brought in. So people are very interested in this. So one of the things I would ask you while I'm here, here's my pitch for the morning. Uh, I'm sales and marketing, so I have to do it. <laughs> um, roll towel. If there's any way I can get information from the business owners in the room, we'd really like you to support us there. We're getting a lot of support from people like Unisource. They're in the distribution business. We're getting a lot of support from people elsewhere in the state. Uh, we signed on uh, Unisource and the Providence Hospital Association. We've also got uh, Milwaukee Sanitation. So the sanitation distribution companies in the region that you're buying from, ask them for our product. I'll get you the information. If you let me know who you are and you really want to support us, which clearly we'd be very happy with that, I will make sure you get the information and make it easier for you to ask for this product. Okay. It's also a Washington, Washington State company that makes this, so that's your supporting within the state as well. Okay. Um, and of course, that all comes through the, the crib side of it. So, what are we doing? Well, you all know that we had the telephone directory business, which is clearly right up there. Um, we've moved into a lot of other products. The ones we've hit so far are in red. So a big one for us right now is paint masking. This is paint masking. I'm sure anybody who's done any home renos has seen this stuff. You put this up to block paint, make sure that it, you know we're all sloppy. I'm certainly sloppy. Um, and very, very easy to apply. But we also go into automotive with it. This would be into boats, automotive, anything of that nature. So we also do green and brown. We've uh, done some red paper as well. But this will give you an idea how we're diversifying. So what we're doing is we're not getting out of the printing and writing business. We're going to maintain business in printing and writing. We don't think it's a good idea to exit too quickly. But we are replacing the business that's not profitable. We're culling the business off the bottom that doesn't make sense for us. And we're driving into products of that position. You can see that we're getting into gum-based game. Another big one for us. Very, very important. Small, but very powerful. Gumming tape, or water-activated base tape, is used in boxes to close it for security. We've negotiated with Amazon, another Washington State company who's growing tremendously fast, to make water-activated base tape. So we've approached the two largest producers of tape like this, and what Amazon is doing for us is they're asking for recycled content. The current supplier of this product is all virgin. So Amazon is telling their connector, their converting community, we want recycled products. So this is that business of, I'm coming through the bottom, our other two guys are coming through the top, and it's meeting in the middle. So the strategy works. This is our product. If any of you want to see it after, you're more than welcome to. But whenever you buy anything from Amazon, Walmart, any of these e-fulfillment companies, nine times out of 10, it's security tape like that. That's an industry, by the way, that was dead three years ago literally dead, and Amazon threw it up. Okay. Uh, some of the other stuff, things like uh, bags, submarine bags, takeout food service bags, Kentucky Fried Chicken, all of this type of product we can make at the mill now. So we're driving, cars. this is where volume comes from. So we do need some of that business for sure. Not always the best business around, as you know. Uh, more volume means lower prices. But we get into specialty stuff. This is wax. This is our 20 pound wax paper for submarine wrap. So a very large, I use some of my Canadian connections and I bring this business into Canada. Again, something the mill has never done before. We're doing all kinds of things that are outside the box. <coughs> Starbucks supporting us. As small as that is, it's very important for them. Sample bag. They fill it with coffee and they send people out the door to try it. And what they're doing now is they're going to move into cookie bags with us. And one of the things we're talking to them about is putting a QR box on the back of their product so people can scan it. 
as you know, uh, most of us in the room are baby boomers. Well, there's a generation below us that is chasing more information via the internet. We want to capture that. We want to. We have to think of the mill for a hundred years from now. How do we do that? Well, we do it with the young people getting their attention. And when they walk into Starbucks and they want to know what this paper is made of, they're going to be able to scan that box, and there's a story connected to it. It's going to be onto one of their landing pages, and they're going to get the full information that's right here in the mechanical part. We're connecting all the dots. Next thing that we're doing, uh, just to lend a little bit of more fun to it, sugar, uh, not sugar pouches or oatmeal pouches. The mechanical refined pulp loves poly polycoating. We found that, you have to remember, most of the paper industry is chemical pulp. We're mechanical pulp here. So the story is much stronger from an environmental standpoint than it's ever been before. I come from a chemical pulp background, so I know where all the, the problems exist. So I'm playing on that. Probably a lot of people aren't, aren't very happy with me. I'm a bit of a rebel, if you will. I'm, I'm not afraid to, to make noise about things. And for what it's worth, uh, it's working. So I'm not going to abandon it. Um, some of the other things we're doing, Walmart bread bags. We just started doing the Walmart bread bag. That's new for us. A lot of odd things that they do to it. Again, uh, we found a way the polyethylene films love to marry to mechanical pulp, even more so than they do to chemical pulp. So we've got a good story going on. It's a lot of a lot of chemistry around it. Roofing material. No one would have ever, ever, ever thought to go into roofing material. That's our sheet on the back. All I did was I tore a swatch off this morning. I'm sorry, it's not pretty. I just was in a hurry and I grabbed one, so it's a little messy. But you can get the idea of what we're doing. We're extremely diversified. And finally, I would say um, one of the things we're experimenting with, um, I'm saying I should show you one more thing. As far as Amazon goes, because they're a Washington, Washington State company, I want to plug them. They're trying to create a recycled package wherever they can. They want to make sure that their box, their void fill, and their tape is environmentally sound. So the box is recycled. The void fill, the product that you see in the box that wraps whatever it is that goes in the box, is our paper. Usually, typically, it's uh, two 30-pound basis weight sheets. That's recycled, of course, because we're going to supply some of it. Our, one of our competitors is supplying it right now but we're finding our way in through the door, okay? And of course, we're gonna move into the tape. One of the other things that Randpack, the company that's interested in the void fill side of it, is what we're doing with crates paper. Um, none of you will have ever seen this before. I, again, I tried to grab a bigger sample this morning and because I was in such a hurry, I didn't. But we can make paper that's stretchable, okay? You have never seen this before. No. Okay? I promise you, you haven't seen it before. <laughs> we have developed a technology that no one else has their hands on, which we're going to exploit here in Port Angeles. This is going to help us with more profit. We are going to get into furniture wrap. We're going to get into all kinds of neat things for the packaging industry. The challenge I have right now is trying to figure out how to go to market with it the best way possible to maximize our profit here in Port Angeles. So that's very, very new. You're, this is as cutting edge as you're going to get in the paper industry. Okay. Does that paper come from the rubber tree? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. We talked about paint casting. Uh, I'll just get through some of this because some of this we've talked about already. Uh, we talked about the receipt paper this morning. We do also thermal-based paper. We don't do it here at the mill. Japan does it over in Japan. Um, and we do bring actively bring that into North America, but it's sold through a different channel. Uh, of course, from an environmental standpoint, very important. Uh, we're the Pacific Northwest. I spent 10 years in Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, when I was working with James River. And you guys will know the James River name from the past. It's now been molded into Pacific now. 
nevertheless, uh, very important for us is the environment, and to be environmentally sound, so we carry all the right certifications, okay? Uh, we are FDA compliant. We've made sure that everything about our mill is FDA compliant, okay? Don't get uh, hung up by the 25% because we're up here around 75%. Some of, the slide. Some of the reasons why we've been able to grow, companies like Cascade and Fibermart have closed. They've taken a lot of tons out of North America. Capstone, as you know, unfortunately for them, they're having all kinds of labor to problems in Longview. It's a really difficult situation. I worked there for two years. I understand the mindset there. They're having a difficult time. Okay. Uh, Port Townsend announced that they will no longer make specialty grades. That's going to help us. We just recently hired a gentleman from Port Townsend who was going to be left to try and figure out where to go. Uh, a lot of people said, well, he's 60 years old. I said, hey. I'm very, very happy to have a 60-year-old come on board. He's got knowledge, experience. I'll take that any day, that's for sure. Um, SP Fiber just recently closed down in Newburgh, Oregon. Now, the 35,000 ton number is a product that we can capture. We don't want all of it. Some of it's not very profitable. But we'll take the stuff that's profitable. Um, and KPAC just recently shifted. They're down in Louisiana. Um, and they've shifted to lightweight and line of work medium. So there's big holes. And one of the big things is McDonald's. It used to be all white bag. They've done the brown bag. So the good news for us is that market is getting tighter and tighter, a market we're entering, which means prices should appreciate over time. Good news for us. Again, some of the reasons to buy, I don't probably need to go through this with you. Uh, we've talked about it already. We are pulling together a number of long-term supply agreements. So we're talking to people like Amazon, Starbucks, and into the converting network to make sure we do what we have to do to sub sustain ourselves going forward. Okay. And that's it. Are there any, any questions? <coughs> How are you branded when you're out there? Are you branded NPI or DuPont or we're branded or right. paper? Or okay, very, very good question. Have you been talking to my Japanese owners? Because they've been all over me about it. Um, when I joined in March, um, one of the things that uh, I got tagged with was developing branding for NPI. The Japanese have not been very uh, crystal. Crystal kicked me for it, but they're not very good at branding. Um, they're very good at a lot of stuff, but branding is not one of them. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to build the branding side of it. Um, that's my challenge right now. So you're catching me right in midstream to start putting some names, some titles, uh, that was really my question. Are you looking at you know absolutely the market analysis? Absolutely. Right? We're trying to capture something that's connected to the region. <coughs> yeah. Um, that's a little more difficult because a lot of names are taken already. Yes, it is what it is. Yes, sir. Have you taken a look at number two machine and decided what grades of paper you might be able to modify the machine to make at this point? Um, I'll answer that one. But I'm going to put my political hat on for a second. Uh, and I'm not doing that. I apologize. <coughs> yeah, the short answer is yes. We're, we would love to do something with PM2. But in reality, uh, we're still a year away. We're at least a year away. It would be lovely to say that we could start it out too long, but that's not going to happen right now. Market conditions don't allow it. Um, it's one of those things. If we did turn it on right now, um, prices would fall. So we want, to, we want to avoid that. We don't want to cannibalize good things that are happening on Korea by turning it So we made it a business in the state. The right moment will come along. We're looking. Yes, sir. Do you plan on any more employees? Love to. We're looking. We actively uh, look through uh, Seattle area. We're looking all over this region for new employees all the time. Um, as I said, we've hired back 15 people. Uh, when I joined, there was 150. We're 165 now. Um, I can tell you there's a steady flow of people coming through for interviews. That I see, because there's, my office is not very far from where the door is, so I, I see people all the time. And I'm typically approaching them to say, can I help you, and I'm here for an interview. So, yeah. Where does the fuel for your cogen facility currently come from? from biomass. It comes from clippings, it comes from, uh, a lot of it comes out of uh, Interfor. It comes from a number of hog fuel suppliers in the region. 
we'd love to have more of it. About how far away, how big is the footprint of the area that supplies you? It, it varies right now. Uh, we've explored <coughs> we've explored up to 100 miles away. It's freight prohibitive. That's, it's the freight that causes right. the problem. So we'd love to draw more. Uh, the good news is, is as freight cost falls because fuel prices fall, it helps us expand that zone. But with anything else, as freight tends to tighten up after a while. One of the biggest problems is the freight industry is not enough drivers. We're stuck there. That's and the last follow-up, I mean, you, you've seen that connected to the uh, part, connected to the supply of timber, there have been some shutdowns of various processing facilities, yes. Green Creek and Interfor and so forth. To the extent those are your suppliers, do you have any concerns or how much excess supply is there still in an economical area where you, at some point, you might get to the point where there's not going to be enough for, to fuel this facility 24-7 if you have more of these plants shutting down? We've planned ourselves out to 2020. I can't comment beyond that because my crystal ball doesn't work very well. But I can tell you that the, uh, we're planned out to 2020. We're comfortable with where we're at for the moment. Um, certainly, if more people come into that market, it's a benefit to us. It helps us negotiate for better prices on it. But at the moment, we're comfortable with where we're at. We're getting what we need. The group that's supplying us is doing a good job. Um, they're very flexible. You know, we get into situations where we have to have trucks every hour on the hour, depending on what we're doing. And they've been extremely supportive. The local community has been extremely supportive. Yes. Can you comment on the environmental requirements, the rules, regulations that govern your business, and are there things you want to change uh, without harming the environment? Um, they're going a little bit far downstream for me, but uh, what I'll do, I'll address it this way. Um, we, there's two things when I joined the mill. Um, coming from a European background, European mills are the most environmentally sound mills in the world, by far. It's not even close. Um, so I pulled some experience from there, and you know what? Uh, Steve Johnson, our mill manager, he was way ahead of the curve. I did not expect this. We actually had visitors this week. Uh, Amazon's largest supplier, Intercape, in Wisconsin, uh, came to visit the mill this week. They visited a lot of other mills in their travels. And they said that this was by far one of the cleanest mills they've ever seen. And they've seen mills all over the place. So we were very, very happy to hear that. Just as a contributing factor to what we're doing environmentally, uh, we capture, uh, there's no waste that comes from the mill. I mean, our ownership group, because of our, our culture and what we want to do, is connected to the environment. Everything we do is connected to the environment. So to, without sounding like I'm trying to skip past your question, because I'm not, uh, I would look further into it if you want me to. By all means, I'll give you a proper answer. But I can tell you that when we became FDA compliant, FDA captures a lot of that stuff. We're FSC, PEFC, these are all the forest management associations that are making you compliant. Um, you can't carry those credits and those certifications without capturing the proper blocks in the environment. That's great. What so, about the nanoparticle conversion? Um, I'll, I'll have to actually look into that for you. That I'm not the first one. So, Mark, you, you talk about your different forestry certifications, FSC, SFI. Yeah. Um, it turns out that about 25% of the forest land in Washington is owned by small farm family farmers. Okay. Their certification system, system is the American Tree Farm Certification System. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, which is PEFC certified? Mm -hmm. and I'm curious why you don't show that. <coughs> show that. System. I could easily show. I mean, uh, this is just strictly a time thing. I, I again, I have a, a lot of presentations in there. We got asked that same question uh, by the folks at Hobby, which is the buying arm for McDonald's. They want. They want to know. That everybody's into the supply chain, chain of custody. So they want to look as far downstream as possible. They want to know. Where does your product come from? What are you doing? <coughs> How are you handling it? 
uh, all those questions come about. We had to address those through. So if you want a more detailed answer, more than happy to do that. We're very, by the way, if, if there's one message I want to get out this morning, everybody, we're very transparent. Yes, sir. So I want to go back to when you said I'm here marketing and that's what I need to say in the beginning. Yeah. Well, as a business group, what would you like from us? <laughs> we really what you can do. Um, See, I don't even know the name of the product that you're selling to that. I totally, buy totally understand that. What I, I guess what I would ask you to do this morning. Um, I have my business cards here. If there's any way to leave me a business card that you have, uh, you're all business owners. You all play a vital role in the community and what you do for your businesses. Um, you have a responsibility to your employees just as we do at Nippon and we want to support each other wherever possible. So uh, that being said, if I can get in touch with you and give you this information, there's a lady that owns a company called American Paper Converters. She'll love this. I'll make sure I plug her properly. So when this comes out on YouTube, she'll be very excited about it. American Paper Converters is a tissue and towel converter in Woodland, Washington. Um, she's a very interesting lady. She's, uh, yeah, she's very difficult to deal with, and I'd say that very openly for her. But she's, uh, she's run a very, very good shop. She started a business, and it's very well run. We're very happy with what she's doing and moving forward. Okay. Um, I can connect the dots for you. There's a lot of janitorial, sanitation companies, paper distributors that come into the Port Angeles region. I would encourage you to ask them for her products, which will be connected to us. She will know right away. I will connect the dots for you. Thank you. Yeah. So are any of these at Swain's or Sunset Wire or anything like that available locally? Not yet. By? Not yet. Okay. No. Uh, things of this nature, I mean, this is, if I'm going to plug something this morning, the one thing I wanted to get out was roll towel and multi-fold towel. This is a very good volume product for us. We can make it very easily on the machine. Um, it's something we definitely want to do. Yes? I'm going to do a shameless plug too while I'm here, if I may. Chris Nagara, who is president at Nippon USA, he is a Peninsula College graduate. Oh. Uh, you can go read his story on our website if you click uh, on alumni stories. Uh, he was an international student with us, completed an associate's degree, went on to Central Washington University, the rest is history. Absolutely. So it's another connection with uh, that Nippon has with this community. In Portland, I think. Yeah. So very, very supportive. That's for sure. Yes, sir. Um, just my impression is that you're awfully uh, vertically integrated. How much of your product actually goes through converters? All of our product goes through converters. Uh, as far as being vertically integrated, we're vertically integrated on our, call it our source management, our products coming in, we make our own steam and so forth. So from a cost standpoint, we're vertically integrated. So that helps us out. We don't do any converting. All of this product is not converted by Nippon. It's converted by other sources, by the converting community. We don't wish to compete in that arena. Uh, Nippon in Japan has a lot of converting. Uh, it's not to say that it couldn't happen, but uh, at the moment, no, we're, we're very happy with what we're going with the customers. No, no problem. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Is there a technology using paper that would create a product similar to a methane plastic bag that we all know and love at a supermarket? You know, uh, there are certain things you can do with paper. I mean, we all know the initiatives that have taken place by many of the states where they're trying to drive uh, plastic bags out of their environment and move into paper bags. California is one of the big leaders in it. Um, they were moving ahead very aggressively. They stalled for the moment. It's become a political football. Um, there are things we can do with paper that will allow us to compete with it. Our biggest problem right now is the 
buying community, people that buy the plastic bags and so forth. Plastic bags are quite inexpensive right now. They go with the price of oil. It's a petroleum product. Um, so right now what we run into is the, the pricing issue. There's no question about it. I mean, product for product, I'll, I'll tell you right now, uh, I'll use Kentucky Fried Chicken as an example. Um, I went there last night uh, just to grab one of their products, which I know is made from very similar paper to what we do. When you take food out from there, everything goes out in a plastic bag, but the inside is in paper bags. There's a lot of questions that you can ask why we would do something like that, but this is what the industry has chosen to do. Everyone has their own ideas, right? And this is where we this is where we bump into the issues. Um, some people believe that you can't put enough sizing in paper to make it repel water or moisture. You know you can't. But to try and get people to that point can be very difficult. And then you arrive at pricing, because pricing does play a role. There's no question about it. So tier four oil prices to go up, because uh, it, it certainly helps us. It helps us two ways. It helps us with cogen, and it also helps us with uh, pricing for the paper products versus plastic products. Okay. Maybe to explain a little something about the cogen thing, it was actually an $85 million project that came in and basically, again, it sells energy. And maybe just explain that a little bit. But obviously the prices are a little low right now. But uh, yeah, it was it was it was installed to install the power of the plants, but also do these other things. Yeah, I mean we've invested a tremendous amount of money in cogen. It's a good story. Uh, it's green biomass. Uh, we want to put as much of that energy out into play. Um, so supporting it will make a big, big difference. We've gone to people like uh, Google, Amazon, uh, Twitter. All these people that operate server farms, they're all big buyers of energy. That is their main cost. So we want those folks to come to us. That's what we're all looking for. But again, there's a step process. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm missing something important here. Yeah. Are you adding energy back into the grid? We sell energy back to the grid right now. That's interesting. Um, but apparently Port Angeles is at, at the end of, of, a, of a long pipeline for energy. So as, as far as I know it is. Yeah. Okay. So I, don't, I don't control that. That's something that's outside of our control. Um, and apparently the, the Public Utilities Commission has extra capacity and has been looking for places to sell it. Um, yeah, that's uh, typically uh, Steve Johnson at our operation gets involved with that. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, my challenge has been to move the paper agenda ahead. I've not gotten involved in a day-to-day -day basis on energy. Uh, the, the business has been cut, in, cut into three parts, really. We've got energy, we've got paper sales, and we've got the directory as being uh, what we began. So my, my responsibility lies with paper sales and making sure directory does what it has to do from a profitability standpoint. As far as energy goes, I leave that baby with Steve. I don't drive into that too To what degree are, 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 excuse me, um, are you generating your own energy for your own needs? We provide our own. Yeah, we're providing steam to the paper machine. And that's what we do. Yeah. Okay. I might just comment on that. The power doesn't come out of the biomass plant and go all the way to Florida or something and it goes into the grid here. So whatever is being generated down in the Portland area, whatever, doesn't it it have to doesn't generate quite as much. Indeed, so. yeah. 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 It goes into a pool and then it's all about All right, any other questions? Ah, Connie, yes. our port commissioner here. I want to say thank you so very much to you and your company for your forward thinking and moving us into the future and not allowing this mill to close along with the telephone books. It's so very important. And I publicly also want to thank Nippon for helping Crescent Water last Wednesday morning. I'm operator of Crescent Water and that's why I was not here last Tuesday. I put in a 22 and a half hour day because I had a main break under the track out there. And that line was not on our maps. And I know that part of the pond was shut down waiting for Power Tech to get there. 
and I needed them out there to locate this line for me so I could count it off. And you guys allowed him to come out and spend a day with us to find that line, even though part of your plant was down. And I just want to say thank you so very much. You're very welcome. Um, to that to that point, um, we uh, again I'll say um, our our leadership group has been very sensitive to the local community. Um, we realize that uh, with all the changes that have taken place. It's not easy to, to manage a business anymore in this world. It's changed very, very quickly. And <coughs> part of that, uh, as a manufacturer, we know that manufacturing has, has been hurt in North America. Uh, with so many things changing, uh, going into a lot of the Asian markets where it tends to be less expensive to make products. And a lot of these products can be made in, in China, as an example. But uh, we continue to make products here, it's important for us to maintain our position, and that's what we will do. So uh, thank you very much for saying that. It's very encouraging to, that people notice those things. It's helpful, and I'll pass it along to Chris and Steve. You're welcome. We have time for one more question. Anybody else? Everybody good? All right. All right. Woo! Thank you very much. And Connie, you're, you're underway with uh, the interviews. For the new sitting commissioner. Okay. On Friday, you're going to be interviewing? Nine, nine o'clock on Friday, they're going to start their interview. You saw the list, there's a number of people, a lot of local people uh, apply for the job, so it be interesting. And I will videotape those. Anyway, any other, yes, Steph just noted that she's going to be uh, uh, videotaping that too, so that's great, thanks. All right, any other questions, any other issues, any other things from Mark? All right, um, we'll see everybody next Tuesday, same time, same place. We know Andrew doesn't need a, need a mic. Or you want to <laughs> no mic for me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, members and guests, many guests, good morning and welcome to another beautiful day in Port Angeles. It really is beautiful here, and we take so many things for granted. The mountains, the ocean, the good friends, the hot food on our table, even mundane things like news, like paper. You ordered off a menu, you're going to get your bill on paper, you're going to sign a visa, credit card, receipt, you're going to write a check. We don't see the recorder. We might even read the story in the paper tomorrow of today's meeting. Paper has been with the human race for thousands and thousands of years. It's part of our daily life. And we are really fortunate right here to have it manufactured in our hometown, employing 165 people at good family wage jobs. This is the kind of diversified industry we want. But what are the products they are making? What are the products of the future? How is that buying? A lot of strange twists to it. The industry was very vertically integrated, uh, which made things very difficult. Um, I'm a bit of a uh, uh, change person. I believe change is good. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think we all have to keep our eyes and ears open to it. And we have to adapt constantly. That is the nature of all of our businesses. You're all business owners, so I'm sure you understand that probably better than anybody. Um, I decided to jump into lightweight craft paper. Uh, I've been on it for a number of years. I worked for Cascade in Canada. I worked. Uh, I started Mondi in uh, North America. Mondi was a, a zero company in North America. Set up their head office in Atlanta and today they're about a $750 million business. So they're very viable, they've done very well, it's a European entity. Um, they uh, have been very, very successful at getting into lightweight paper, which is where I came across with the folks at Nippon. Um, also to add to that, I've also been part of Longview Fiber when it was Longview Fiber, just down the road, now it's Capstone. Um, I was there for two years as their export director. So what I'm, in effect, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pull all my years of expertise together and use them to the advantage of Nippon paper here in Port Angeles. Okay? 
So what I'll do, I think they've been making all their money on for years and years, but with times changing, uh, culture changing, we're all into personal devices, these things are struggling very badly. In fact, we're almost seeing none of it at the moment. So what they did was they started looking around for other things to do. Um, so what they did was they started canvassing a lot of the people in the paper industry, and we stumbled across one another. Um, I came out here and I met with uh, Chris Nagara, uh, the president, the Japanese uh, appointed president here in North America, and uh, with Steve Johnson and a number of the other executives. Um, I explained to them where I had come from, what I had been doing, uh, and how I had been doing it. So my background is um, tissue first. Um, I was born into the paper industry many years ago into white tissue paper. Uh, things of uh, towel, uh, facial tissue, dinner napkins, things of that nature, okay? Um, did that for a number of years and then um, decided that I wanted to make a change. Tissue was actually very exciting at that time, but there were other sectors and I've always been a, a challenge person. I don't like to do things that are too easy, I like to do things that are hard. So I decided to look at craft paper. Now, craft paper had a biomass generator doing. Let's sit back and learn all about our own industry here in Port Angeles as we melt, welcome um, Mark Fournay, who is the Director of Sales and Marketing. Welcome, Mark. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting me to speak at this. I really appreciate it. Um, it's actually quite interesting. I haven't, uh, I've been here for the one year in March of this year. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a Canadian, so thanks for knowing about the money now. <laughs> Make sure I get well, you it. told me about the house you have for sale. <laughs> yes, I do have that. I do have a house for sale in Canada that I'm trying to get rid of, but it's not been an easy venture, that's for sure. Um, so I've been here a little over almost a year now. Um, uh, Nippon approached me uh, back in December of 2014, just after what you're very familiar with was PM2 shutting down. And as you know, at the mill, uh, telephone directory was probably the most popular item on the machines. It's something that uh, the mill was born on. Because I'll take you through um, what we or where we were with Nippon very briefly. Uh, most of you know where we were, but I'll take you down a road that you'll be probably quite surprised to learn. So I'll take you through very quickly a group overview so you can see what we look like now. Uh, for those of you that don't know what we look like, we're Japanese owned. Uh, the Japanese owners have been extremely supportive. I think we have to definitely tip our hats to them. They are listening very hard. Uh, I joined in March. We've had a visit from Mr. Mamashiro, who's the chairman of the company. We've also had a visit from Mr. Nozawa, who's our chief strategic officer. Um, I have met with them. We've discussed strategy in North America. Uh, that is my forte <coughs> where I drive. The folks that are here from the paper mill know somewhat of what I've been talking about. I do address all the paper groups in the mill. One of the things I like to do and that the Japanese have been very supportive of is I address the union once a quarter. I think it's very important to leave, let all the management know that I will communicate with the union people at the mill. They have a vested interest in what we're doing. Our livelihoods are connected to it. Uh, I've moved here from Montreal, so we better be successful. <laughs> uh, more importantly than anything else. Um, 